Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. Today's video is gonna be all about my big move to New York City. Also cheers because I am definitely getting ready for New Year's Eve right now while I make this video. I remember since I was like 14 years old, I always wanted to live to New York City, but I won't lie. Living in New York City is very different than visiting and that leads me to my first big point. <laughs> Whenever a person tried to warn me about New York City, they always brought up the weather. But luckily for me, nine times out of ten, whenever I was visiting, it was always for like my birthday or maybe spring break. So I was pretty used to how cold the weather is. Because I was so used to the cold weather in New York City, that did not surprise me. What did surprise me was the cost of living. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. You know how when you visit a place, you set up a certain budget, right? So you're like, oh, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z amount of things. I'm gonna spend this amount of money on Ubers. And I'm gonna spend this amount of money on food because you prep for that trip. It hits a little bit different when you're stuck and you're living in it. And then you're realizing those prices aren't just vacation prices, they are everyday prices. You definitely need to prepare for cost of living. Everything in New York City is an investment. Again, because it gets very cold, so you need a very warm jacket, you need warm shoes, you need thermals, you need so many different things. Also, how much food costs, how much rent costs, those stuff add up. I think the biggest thing I struggled with at first was the fact that like, there's always something to do, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should do every single thing out there. My friends were always going out, and they were going out in Manhattan, but I live in Brooklyn. So obviously like I was subway there, but I wouldn't get home until like 3 a.m. So I would naturally want an Uber, but those Ubers add up. I was spending over $500 on Ubers. I just want you to let that sink in. Okay. This kind of leads me to my next point slash my first piece of advice. Choose your neighborhood wisely, okay? I always knew I wanted to move to Brooklyn and I kind of had an idea about what neighborhoods I wanted to move to, but I did not factor in how important it is to be a certain distance from your subway, okay? Being more than five minutes away from your subway may sound like a breeze, especially when you're coming right out of college. You're like, oh, I walk across campus all the time. Unless that campus was NYU, baby, it's, it's just not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. I recommend being no more than five to seven minutes away from your subway line. And also you need to pay attention to what subway lines you have available to you. Just because you live in Brooklyn doesn't mean Crown Heights is easy to get to or Williamsburg or Bed-Stuy. You might have to end up Ubering because you don't have a subway line that will get you there. Does that make sense? Number one, you need to a thousand percent make sure your subway line will take you directly to your job, okay? Try your hardest to only have one line to take, no transfers, because those transfers will get old when you're going to work. Also, if you can keep your commute time around 30 to 40 minutes, that is golden, and that should include your walk to the subway, how long the subway ride is, and then your walk from the subway to your job. I'm telling you anything more, you're gonna struggle. You're gonna you're gonna struggle. Once you found a spot that has a subway line that goes directly to your job, the next spot is where you're gonna hang out. And I did not factor this enough. Where do your friends live? Are you gonna go out in Manhattan but you live in Brooklyn? Well, do you have subway lines that will easily take you to Manhattan or at least the neighborhoods of Manhattan that you plan on going out? This stuff matters and it will keep you from taking Ubers late at night. Also, let's say you go out late at night, let's say like 2, 3 a.m. you're out. As long as you have a subway line that takes you directly back to where you live and it's less than a five minute walk, it might be worth it. It might be safe enough. It might be safe enough for you to do that and you're still saving money from Ubers. Another thing that you need to consider when picking a neighborhood is what you're gonna be surrounded by, right? So like, are you near all the bars and restaurants, meaning there's gonna be a lot of heavy foot traffic near your apartment? That might get noisy at night. Also, there might be some nasty rodents that you're gonna, you're gonna come across on the street. And I mean, uh. <laughs> let me tell you a funny story about when I was apartment hunting. I thought I found the place. Now this is also when I thought I was gonna live by myself. Rent was crazy, it was like 2.5, but it was a one bedroom, it was beautiful, it was near Prospect Park, and it was in a nice area, so I thought. Then we went to go visit it, and again, I thought it was wonderful. It was a walk up, but like what apartment is in a walk up in New York City? And I thought it was amazing. I thought it was super safe. And then my aunt noticed that there were like a lot of guys hanging out of this one building and it just like, I don't know, she just caught a vibe so she looked up the place. It was a mental health rehab facility. 
which nothing wrong with it but like as someone who was planning on living by herself in this apartment and that was across the street and because they were like outside that means like they those were patients but they were allowed to like freely roam which is you know again perfectly fine but like as a woman coming home at all hours of the night i just told you i go out till like 3 4 a.m and in that facilities across the street maybe that's not the safest thing for me especially when i'm just moving to new york city so this is what i mean by like you have to choose your neighborhood wisely and you have to go visit the apartment that you have interest in okay do not just trust the relator who's on facetime with you showing the place you need to go visit the space or you need to have a friend go visit on your behalf and check out like what's surrounding that apartment building something else that surprised me about that one bedroom was how tiny it was for 2.5 a month do you know how some people's mortgages in the suburbs and that leads me to my third point and piece of advice for you guys you need to make sure you have a healthy savings before you move to New York City. I am beyond lucky and blessed that my company gave me a sign-on bonus and relocation money or else I promise you I would not have been able to move to New York City. I signed a lease for August 1st and I started work on August 7th so I did not have first and last month by August 1st. I am also extremely blessed that I have such a supportive family who helped me make that move because again I would have been out of luck. I would have I wouldn't have moved. I obviously paid them back once like the check cleared, but the point is, is that it gets real, you know? People always warn you like, oh yeah, first and last month rent. But like, when you see the number, my best advice for you is that you need to have at least four to $5,000 saved up because you don't know how much your rent is going to be. I ended up with a roommate and with rent controlled rent and I was so, overwhelmingly unprepared for how much money that move was going to be i know i alluded to it earlier the fact that i was at first looking to live alone but i like i mentioned i ended up living with a roommate and it was the best decision ever i also got really lucky with my roommate and i do enjoy living with her also it doesn't hurt the fact that it's a rent stabilized unit like i got extremely lucky with it with that being said i know a lot of people like most people who move to new york city they hope to live alone. I think you have to assess your budget and determine does that make the most sense. The reason why I say that is because once again, like, if you want a nice one bedroom apartment that is in a very nice neighborhood, you feel safe, you're looking anywhere between two to three K a month. So you need first and last. So you're looking anywhere between four to six K initial deposit. And we haven't even gone to furniture. Baby, the furniture really ate me alive. Oh, it really ate me alive. And I was beyond blessed and lucky because my roommate lived there prior to me, meaning there was already furniture there waiting for me. I didn't even have to buy nearly as much furniture as I would have if I lived alone. Who knows if my place would be furnished by now? <laughs> I know a lot of people have asked me in the past, like, how do you find a roommate? I got really lucky and I was just talking to a colleague about how I'm looking for a roommate and how i'm trying to like look on facebook group pages which is a good recommendation or like group me's that i've been added to and actually i got really lucky because my colleague her friend was moving out of the apartment and she needed somebody to take over her lease and i was luckily that person now i want to do a quick like speed round if you will of like common questions i receive so again like i've already told you the story of how i found my apartment but i know a lot of people find apartments through street easy another one is nookland.com especially if you want to live in brooklyn obviously nookland would be the best website there's other sites like listing project i recommend especially if you're cool with having a roommate another one i would recommend is facebook group i don't know how i'm not sure what the success rate is with that but there were a lot of people in there looking for roommates or people who already like signed on a lease and they're just looking for people to like hop on it but honestly talk to your friends because nine times out of ten especially if you already know someone who lives in new york they know somebody who's looking for somebody to move in with them or maybe they have to give up their lease or maybe they're subletting a lot of people also ask me if i regret moving to brooklyn versus manhattan and my immediate answer is no <laughs> i love how quiet and residential my neighborhood is and i love not being where i party and obviously i love how much my rent is like if i were to live in east village like a lot of my friends oh my god my rent would be easily 
$500 to $800 a month more. It's ridiculous. Another question I get asked a lot is how to make friends in New York City. I will say I was blessed with already having a community there because a lot of people who graduated from my university went to New York City to work full time. I'm also a part of a career program called MLT and a lot of my friends if you know, you know, the MLC pipeline to New York City is very strong. So a lot of my friends who graduated from that program is also in this city. I keep losing light. <laughs> that being said, I feel like most people make friends in New York through like their career or activities. So like if you go to a gym or you do a workout classes and you start to notice the same people come into the same workout classes then you guys end up exchanging numbers and you guys go to lunch maybe after a workout class or some people join social clubs. That's very popular, but obviously social clubs aren't free. So I don't know if you wanna do that your first year out. I will say full warning, it is a lot harder to make friends in New York City than you would imagine. For example, there's been so many times where I've gone out and I felt like I met a cool group of people and I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna be friends. Nine times that it's in the follow-up does not happen, probably because they have friends already in the city or maybe they have friends from college that moved to the city. Yeah. <laughs> there are social media accounts who try to make it their goal to help people meet one another. So they'll host like parties or like social events to give folks the opportunity to meet one another. I think my biggest issue with that is always like the follow up. Like, do we actually ever follow up? I don't know. I kind of like my makeup. I'm gonna add blush, I don't know. I've been kind of light with the blush lately. I've also been asked the question a ton, like, how do you save money in New York City? I don't know yet. <laughs> I haven't quite mastered that. I won't lie to you. Obviously, saving money can be challenging, but I think you just kind of learn, like, okay, do I have to go out this time? Do I need to go to this dinner, this go round? Or maybe instead of me and my friend going out to dinner, can we cook a meal at somebody's house and like someone brings a bottle of wine, the other person cooks a meal, you know, like you find different things to do. Um, the colder it gets, I will say the less people go out. And so you end up saving money that way. I haven't quite figured. If you have any tips on how to save money, please let me know. Groceries are so expensive. Like literally, I've been charged $8 for a box of Cheerios and it wasn't the family size. New York is just expensive. The cost of living is no joke. Like when people say that, they're not lying to you. I think it's just something you get used to. But this is also why I recommend coming in with a healthy savings account because until your employment checks start hitting, it gets serious. I think if you have the opportunity to, please save. And also like, you have to think about it. Like if I have the opportunity to not move right away, right when I wanna move, maybe that's the right move because you'll have a way better experience and an easier transition because that is a whole other thing. Like there is a transition that not a lot of people discuss when moving to New York City, especially when it comes to your mental health. There's so many tips I can give with that when it comes to just like leaving your apartment, going outside. That's why there's so many parks in the boroughs. But like there is this moment when you move to New York City where your mental health is a little bit drained. And I think it's just like trying to keep up with the pace of the city, getting accustomed to a new noisy environment, um, living in a much smaller home than you're probably used to for way more money, especially if you're moving from the suburbs to this big city. Literally, there. if you look at my apartment, that's 95% of folks' mortgages where I'm from. And if you look at that size compared to the homes out here, it's like, it's an adjustment, you know? It's definitely an adjustment. There's a grind and there's a hustle, but that's why also people love it. And I do love that side of it. I love how fast it is. I love the fact that everyone's grinding, everyone's trying to make it. That is definitely motivation. With that being said, if you're not about that environment, I can a thousand percent see how that could be a huge struggle. I think my biggest struggle was just like the lack of silence. You know, I live in the burbs. You hear that? You I mean you hear the music, but like that's pretty much it, you know? Like right now you'll be hearing ambulances, police, people, like you'll be hearing so much noise. And that's just not what I was used to. So that was 1000% a huge adjustment. But like you get used to it, you can become accustomed to it. 
And you witness a lot in New York City and that also something you have to be accustomed to. Something else that people don't really talk about is like how easy it is to lose yourself in the city because you have access to so much. I think that's just like any major city like Chicago, LA, Miami, you know, it's just very easy to lose yourself or to like kind of like, you just have to remember why you moved to the city, right? So I moved there for my job. So there was a time for like New York Fashion Week where like, I had to remind myself, you are here because you have a nine to five. Yes, you're also a social media influencer. And you're getting invited to all these different things and these events and blah, blah, blah. But you're also here because you have a corporate nine to five. So that is your first priority. Does that make sense? All in all though, I do love it. People say that your first year is your hardest year and I'm getting through it. So I'm gonna check back in this time next year to tell you how I'm feeling. And lastly, the apartment you get when you first move does not have to be your forever apartment. The neighborhood you move to when you first move does not have to be your forever neighborhood. I was so determined to move to Brooklyn, and I have, but if one day I decide I'm gonna move to Manhattan, that is okay. I doubt that will ever happen. <laughs> but if it does happen, it's okay, and that's my point. I think a lot of people, they dream of living on Upper East Side. They move to Upper East Side, they hate it. And then they're like, well, actually, maybe West Village is more my vibe. Or maybe downtown Brooklyn's more my vibe. Maybe Flatbush is more my vibe. You change your mind so much in that city. And the beauty is the fact that you have so many options accessible to you. You can make whatever decision you want to make. Don't feel like you are married to the very first option. Also, don't feel like you're married to living in New York City forever. Just because you dreamt of it since a little girl doesn't mean you have to stay there. You might get there and realize this is not for me and that is okay. You do not owe anybody an explanation. You do not owe anybody anything. <laughs> you don't owe anybody you staying, okay? You don't have to prove anybody anything. So many people say like, if so many people talk down on living in New York City and say like, oh, you might not survive. You're not gonna survive. Like that's a tough city. You don't have to prove them right or wrong. Make that decision for yourself. Ignore the outside voices and go for it, experience it. And if it's not for you, that's okay. If it is for you, hey, I'm happy for you, you know? Hopefully this video was really helpful for you guys. I'm about to finish up my do. I'm about to like finish up this hair, <laughs> do this hair and finish getting ready for New Year's because it's 10.30, so the ball is about to drop. But yeah, I hope this video was really helpful and if you have any other questions about my move to New York City, please put them down below and I will gladly make a YouTube short answering those questions and I'll probably also answer them in like a vlog. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my video. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my page. I hope you have a beautiful 2024 and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.